Hey everyone, and welcome to the seventh part in cracking ML interviews. So, here is the problem. Why activation functions work in neural networks? Well, let's suppose that we don't use them in the following neural network. What would happen then? So we have our input x here and the weight matrix w1 and if you multiply x with w1 we obtain z1. So z1 is equal to w1 multiplied by x. Then we have the weight matrix w2 which we multiply with z1 and if we do that we obtain z2. So z2 is equal to w2 multiplied by z1. And finally, we have the weight matrix W3, which we multiply with Z2 in order to obtain Y. So Y, our output is equal to W3 multiplied by Z2. All well and good. But what happens if we want to extend this term here, the last one, and express it in terms of X? So you can see what transformation we made to X in order to obtain Y. And if we do that, we would obtain that y is equal to w3 multiplied by z2, which is w2 multiplied by z1, which is equal to w3 multiplied by w2 multiplied by z1, which is w1 multiplied by x. So w1 multiplied by x. So our output y is equal to w3 multiplied by w2 multiplied by w1 multiplied by x which is quite bad. Why? Because this operation here w3 multiplied by w2 multiplied by w1 is a linear operation. So all we have done with all these three layers can be compressed in a single linear layer. So basically our y is nothing else than some weight matrix w4 let's say multiplied by x making all this layer here redundant. And now we can answer the initial question. Why we need activation functions in neural nets? Well, by adding an activation function after each multiplication here, we introduce non-linearities in this term here. So our neural network cannot be compressed to a single linear operation as it would be the case without activation functions. And that's basically it for this video. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.